What I'm going to present here today is a, uh, uh, it's one example of the Schick further investigation of the diagnostic case that I thought was somewhat successful. Uh, so I'm going to talk about sapillovirus, one of, one of the cases we got here in the U.S. And uh, uh, not just myself, there's a lot of people involved on the end. I'm going to, you know, mention whatever person did, that type of deal. So what we have here is that uh, we have a farm, a finisher farm, about 3,000 finisher pigs. Uh, those pigs are about 11 weeks old, and uh, they all come from one, from one single nurse, and they're two different uh, finisher places. Those guys are placed at nine week old, and uh, but the clinical signs are 11 week old pigs. Uh, so I got a phone call from the vet on the lab, and uh, uh, what he described was a, a typical neurological disease, and this. Uh, I'm going to mention the end. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot mention the vet name. The company didn't want to get involved uh, for whatever reason it is, but you can only identify that if you go to the farm. Otherwise, those pigs are called strep, just like most cases we get. A strep case, they don't even send samples anymore because it's strep. So we just got this because the vet went, collect, sit, watch those pigs. Morbidity is about 20% mortality. Uh, case fatality rate, 30%. Uh, this means those pigs affect. 30% of those pigs die. doesn't mean 30% of those pigs all die, just the fat pigs. Uh, like I said, the farm, uh, the company didn't want to be, you know, identified, but it was with Region 5 or Schick. So if you work with pigs, you kind of know where it comes from, the state, the company, not, but that's where the case come from. Uh, one thing that uh, we saw in those pigs, a little, uh, so you guys can read, compromise ambulation, attacks, and coordination. And uh, I don't know if you guys have gone to Chic already, but you can actually watch the videos. Today is, today is very short, about 10 minutes to talk, so I'm not going to show the videos, but if you want to watch online, it's pretty interesting. And one thing you see is that if you actually go to the farm, you're going to see those pigs are not strap pigs. They are a little bit different. So even though the video is not telling us which virus it is, if you watch those pigs, they're not strap pigs. they probably something else. Uh, so I recommend if you have not watched yet to go to the Chic website and watch those videos. Uh, there are a couple of videos, and I think it's pretty interesting just uh, to reinforce that uh, uh, this could be strep, but the way the video show it doesn't look the typical strep you go on a you know on a farm and see it. So what I got a phone call for the vet say a typical case, and that's what he said on the first case: brain, lung, and spinal cord. Second case, we talk, and he said, well, those results do not make sense. Let's send more, case, more pigs. So that's where we got. Another thing I have to say is that brain. So we talk about intestine in pigs. We say six sacs of small intestine. We know that ileum is not column. It's totally different. However, when we talk about brain, we say brain. Well, brain is pretty diverse. If you send for me, brain stem is totally different than frontal cortex, than mesencephalus. So sometimes we get the frontal part of the brain and say, well, we didn't see lesions. Or I didn't have the right sample to do that. So just try to think a little deeper, like Einstein said. Let's make things simple, but not simpler. Brain is not all the same. Spinal cord is not brain. Just think when you submit those samples. Sometimes you're not going to have lesions on the frontal cortex of the brain or the mesencephalus, whatever it is. So all tests on this case are sent individually. So when I got those in a microscope, that's what it looked like. Most of you guys are not pathologists, so I'm just going to describe quick. But this is all inflammation in the brain. Those are lymphocytes, plasma cells, a few macrophages within the neuropil, especially surround blood vessels, a lot of area congestion. And if you look a little closer, receptors from those areas, the same. You have neurophagia, so neurons die as well. And this is very suggestive of a viral disease. So when I get this, that I heard was a strep. So this does not look like strep case. But is not pathognomonic of any disease either. So I couldn't say it's PERS or circovirus or teshovirus, whatever it is. So I could not pinpoint just looking this. So what we do at Iowa State, we run a lot more tests, but this is another example. This is the area of gliosis. So there's a lot of neuron deaths, a lot of uh, glial cells like that. This is the spinal cord. So after talking to the vet on the phone, and I know it's hard to collect spinal cord, however, sometimes it's necessary, especially if you want to look for those cases that it's not classic strep, they're probably something else. So go to the hassle to collect spinal cord. Or send for the whole pig, we're going to collect spinal cord. We've been doing that quite a bit now, actually. So those lesions on the spinal cord, a lot of spongiosis, lymphomacetic uh, myelitis, 
Kind of similar lesion we see not in the frontal cortex. So if you sense for me the frontal cortex, I'm not going to get it. Drain stem, spinal cord, mesencephalo maybe, but not frontal cortex. So what we did, we culture to find our strap that we're looking for, we didn't get it. So we run a PCR for test of ours and enterovirus. We know this guy can cause myelitis, can cause some of the clinical signs, however, PCR are negative. Uh, I run PERS, pseudorabies, test of ours, and circle virus, they're all negative. Uh, PERS I put here because one of the results in one pig was th uh, CT34 on a lung. Uh, we redo the PCR, we couldn't get the same results. We run IHC as well on the brain. I even run Listeria just to see if you're missing something crazy here that those pigs got Listeria. There's a little bit microabscess, not classic, but the only virus we got was Sapilovirus positive. So with that result, I called the vet and said, hey, we have myelitis and look like the only virus we get is Sapilovirus. So very people have described Sapilovirus with myelitis and type of stuff. Few papers in Asia, but if you look at those papers, kind of old papers, very hard to, I wouldn't say wrong, but I don't know if there was a pathology involved on that. So you look at the lesions and you, it's very hard. No report at all in U.S. So we as a pathologist, we have a suspicion that this can cause myelitis. Disease has not been reproduced, so there's a lot of questions on that. So what the vet did and I self, we contact Chic. But just one if you think about Sapilovirus, what is Sapilovirus? It's the femoral picornaviridae. So if you look through the mouth disease, Seneca, those viruses all used to call enterovirus. After genetic sequence, we don't call all enterovirus anymore. We call enterovirus, teshovirus, and Sapilovirus. These viruses we know that can cause myelitis. We have a study going on now, and that has been described in Czechoslovakia a long time ago. Enterovirus, not much. Sapilovirus, Question mark. So we contact Chick to see, can we go further in this case? Does that make sense? Do you think it's a pillowvirus or maybe there's something else? So what we did, we decided to do next generation sequencing. So let's sequence everything that has DNA, RNA on that sample. A spinal cord, brain, let's see what we got. So what is the idea? Is that to confirm, is that a pillowvirus? Can we detect a pillowvirus? And if we can, can we sequence the whole genome of that virus? Second one would be, is that anything else you're missing? There are PCR not catching. Is that any crazy type of purse or circle bars or anything that we didn't pick that PCR? Because PCR is going to get what we're looking for. This not. This is going to look for anything is there on that sample. Another one it's, that I think is most important is that, is there anything new that we're missing here? There's no way I'm going to find something new run PCR. PCR for purse, you're going to find purse or not. That's it. You're not going to find anything new. So Sheik help funding what are we going to do here. And each step of this was done in different labs. I'm going to show you guys in the end. So what we get when you do the next generation sequence? We confirm the sapillovirus results. So we got sapillovirus in high number from those affect pigs, brain and spinal cord. We didn't find anything else, just sapillovirus. So if you think the sapillovirus we found, it's here, which is quite different than any sapillovirus that has been described. If you go and blast, if you go PubMed, this sapillovirus is quite different than the ones described, South Korea, U.S., even this one is pretty new. It's quite different, about 84% similar. This is VP1, I believe. Yep. So what we have here is a case, a typical neurologic disease with a virus that hasn't been described yet. The question comes, what does that mean, the difference? And I do not know. I know that it's quite different. If it's more infective, more pathogenic, I do not have that answer. But it's quite different. So if you look at the VP1, about 84% to 87% different. So we have a virus that's quite different than what we used to see before. Again, the significance of that, I do not know yet, but it's quite different. So it's a novel type of sapillovirus. But we still have that question. It was like, well, we got that virus. We have lesions. We have everything. That's the only virus we got. So I work with Minnesota. Let's try show the virus on a lesion. Let's go even we step even further. So what we did, we developed an in situ hybridization with Dr. Vanucci here in Minnesota. So what we see is that we can demonstrate virus within that lesion. That's a pillow virus within the lesion, within neuron, and if it's some of the Schwann cells we believe on the ganglia. So we got the virus, the only virus, genome sequencing, the whole genome, we have the virus within the lesion. So we're trying to get more evidence to conclude something. Instead of just being, I think, let's put evidence on something. So, we've, so this paper has been submitted, we're trying to get more evidence that 
However, if you think about sapilovars, people have not put back in pigs yet. So there's a lot of questions that need to be answered still. So what we conclude from this is that we have this novel sapilovars associated with uh, polyencephalomyelitis in pigs with a typical disease. We've showed that in vitro, in situ. Uh, like I said, in the U.S. has no other report. There's a pill of virus in semen, in primates, in avian as well. However, there's no reports causing CNS disease either. So what are we trying to do now? We're trying to isolate a virus in cell culture because we want to put back on pigs. Let's see if we can reproduce disease. Let's see those pigs who develop clinical signs. We just did the test of virus type uh, two, serotype 2 and 11. And lesions, clinical signs are just beautiful. So we're going to try to use the same model to put some pillow virus. So far, we don't have the virus growing yet. We're trying hard. Any other potential clinical signs? We do not know. If you run PCR, sometimes abortion, we get positive on fetus. Is that cross-contamination or can the virus do that? If you go in a disease of swine, test of virus can do all that stuff. Enteric disease, respiratory disease. If you go to virus papers, can cause all that stuff. I'm very skeptical until we show that can do all that. But we don't have data for that. But if you want to find data, you find it. Pretty much you prove any point you want. But there is papers showing that. I'm, I think we should do and see what is the real, real relevance of the virus. Another one is prevalence, ecology, epidemiology. Got phone calls from vets. Should I buy guilds free of sapillovirus? And I was like, well, the first question should be, how prevalent is the virus? Does that any, every animal has the virus? We know that test virus is very common. All those viruses, I don't know, sapillovirus. No data whatsoever in the U.S. Another thing I want to say is that in Europe, they look a little bit more for sapillovirus. Data is very scarce. Sometimes they show form dependent. Some forms very positive. Some forms very negative. I do not know at all. There's very small sample size. So the key thing will be like we don't understand, actually. What is the prevalence of that disease? What is the genetic diversity of the virus? We don't have that yet either. So there's a lot of more questions here to be answered. And even what is the, how prevalent is that disease on the field? Because let's be honest, how many times you, the manager, the farm manager collect the sample for you and send? Don't write sample. And you haven't seen that a typical, you usually call it strap pigs. Do we need anything prevention or treatment? How big is the problem? One thing I want to say is that that was kind of, uh, the beauty of this thing is that Sheik put different labs to work all together. Each lab did one part. We get a large, large load of samples. So we got all these samples get tracked to Iowa State. Minnesota helped us with the fish. Fabio did a great job. And Talita, Kansas State with Van Haas, awesome guy. So he does all the next, all the next generation sequencing, all the discovery of new viruses. Minnesota has that technology, and we do have as well. So we could do in our lab as well, but this time I was banned and did. And uh, he's a great guy. But one thing I want to finish is that uh, I have this PPF kind of this. So this guy is William Osler. Uh, he's a physician. He's one of the founders of the John Hopkins Hospital. He's the one that developed residence in medicine. And he used to say this all the time for his students. And one thing I see is that often, like, you've got to go to the farm and see that pig. Is that pig telling you a strap or tell you something else? Like, how often are we missing? I have four cases open my desk now that for so long is a strap case. You know, when the vet went to the farm, it's like, Paul, it doesn't look strap. It's probably something else. And come back, and there's lesions. There's spinal cord lesions. So are we missing something? Is that or it has always been like that we never look for? So what I would recommend for special vets in the field, you got to see those pigs. You gotta see those pigs because sometimes you get too busy doing other stuff to do medicine. So just one thing that uh, collect the right sample, go to the farm and see those pigs. That's I thought was a good example of that how she can help you to investigate further the disease. And maybe we're missing something that there's an old Schwartz from the lab, Dr. Schwartz, you all know that sometimes the unknown can be more important than the things we know already. We just don't look for. For example, Dr. Bob Morrison presented data about no cases in 2016. Or maybe you're not reporting those cases. There's no zero cases. There's a lot more cases. It's not his fault, but because we're not reporting, you don't even look for those cases.